Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Kate Campbell, welcome to this Money and Chill episode on the Australian Fine Arts Podcast. How are you? I am doing excellently, Owen, and it's great to have Monique back with us today. It is. Hello. The Mighty Mini Pizza. Slightly <laughs> tanned. How are you going? I'm great. I feel great that I'm, when I'm tanned. <laughs> Not slightly tanned, very tanned. You've enjoyed a <laughs> Coachella summer. Yeah, a couple of festivals and pool parties and... Uh, been great. <laughs> okay, like it, like it. So, Kate, money and chill. What is it? If this is someone's first time shooting into this episode format, what are we doing? It's our more relaxed and uh, probably not fun, but silly episode for the month mm -hmm. uh, where we just chat about all of our money saving tips for the month, where we have spent a lot of money because we can't save money every month. We share some of our lessons, some of our resources, and what's been happening behind the scenes with the RAS team. So, if you want to learn about something like what an ETF is or how to sort your super out, we have plenty of other episodes in the back catalogue for that and free courses on RASC education. But this is more of a behind the scenes with Owen, myself and our producer, Monique, where we just get to share a little bit about what's happening in our lives. Yes. Welcome home, Monique. Welcome back to the Australian shores. Glad to be back. Okay. So for those folks that don't know, we did a travel episode two months ago, maybe? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where the three of us shared our travel plans and some of the ways people can save money. Mm -hmm. uh, I am waiting for my wise card to come in the mail, the actual physical card. After Kate's experience in mm -hmm. the UK, what was it Paris? I can't remember. Paris, Paris. Utah, Utah, toilet. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Kate's experience losing her phone, I thought I should probably have a physical card in mm. addition to the wise app when I travel. So that's one thing. But uh, yeah, we have a bit of fun and we also like to hear from you for this episode. Uh, you can write into us, you can get in contact on Spotify, give feedback, use the ask a question link on the podcast player that you're listening on. If you're driving, don't do that. Just wait until you pull up and then do it. And you can jump into the REST community and share your savings, hacks, travel ideas, or whatever you have in store. So Kate, where do we begin? Since we talked about travel savings tips before you left, Monique, I thought we should hear back from you and did any of them work? Did you save some money? What did things cost in America? Yeah, well, I haven't been to America in probably like 10 years. So a lot of things had changed, which I was kind of like, you know, you expect it, but it was still kind of shocking when you haven't been to some, a place in a while. Um, so everything was a lot more expensive than what I re remembered. Um, and with the exchange rate, it kind of just like think whatever the price is, and then you double it, which was kind of heartbreaking. So what um, was the lunch setting you back? Um, maybe per person, it would have been like with the conversion, maybe $25, $30 for a meal. That's like a drink included, something like that. Is that in Australian dollars? Australian dollars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's like, not terrible. It's not terrible, but like here I'd be spending $15. So it's like pretty much double. Mm -hmm. Um. One thing that I probably do, and I usually do this, but this time I was like, the exchange rate isn't that bad, so let's just try this different way. I usually have a travel card and um, transfer all my money to the currency to begin with, and then so I'm in like USD or whatever um, from the start. Yeah. Um, this time I've got the U-Bank card that doesn't have the international transaction fee, so I was just paying with that card along the way and then dealing with the exchange rate along the way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> um, uh, and just like with the psychology of it, I didn't like it because it, I wasn't really like paying what the um, FPOS reader was saying, like, because obviously it turned from USD to AUD in my um, statements. Um, so I'd probably just stick with like the travel card next time and stay in the currency that I'm in the country. Um but other than that, like, we didn't go over budget, which was good. Um, was anything cheaper than you expected over there? Not really. It's no? kind of like everything's the same as here now. <laughs> um, even with, like, theme parks and stuff, Universal Studios was so much more expensive compared to last time. Last time I remember paying $80 US and this time it was 140 something US. So that went up a lot. Um, wow, that's a big change. One thing I'd probably 
double check and this was just like a, a silly mistake. One of our flights that I booked, internal flights, I booked it in the wrong month. <laughs> <laughs> what? And luckily I checked, I think it was like five days before the flight, like there was still a fee to like change the flight. But if I had done it on the day, we would have lost money on accommodation and flights, whereas mm. I caught it in time. So it was only like, I think it was, I say only, but it was $400 on top of what we had paid on the original flight. Mm. But at mm. least it was like one silly mistake and I caught it in time. So it wasn't the end of the world. Mm. Um, that would have saved money if I checked that when we booked it. Um, but yeah. I Did you do that because of the weird date system? The That's what I thought, but uh, I was going through it in my head. I'm like, how? How can I be this stupid? Like, I don't usually do these things. Who like- does months, days, years? I mean, come on. So I reckon, Only like 400 yeah, million people. I reckon I just got confused with yeah, the American way of the dates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so silly. But um, yeah, um, what else do I have? Oh, one thing that we actually saved money on, or like was a surprise save money on, in Vegas, we're in the time where they do like pool parties if anyone is just in pool parties, um, they have like DJs and stuff, like really big name DJs. Like, do you know, like Tiesto? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Sophie Tucker. Yeah. And then I saw this guy called James Kennedy. Um, usually like there's a fee to go in. It's around like 50 bucks or whatever, US. Um, but if you go on a guest list through a promoter, you get in for free. Right. So, of course, like once you're in there, they try and like make you pay to sit down essentially. Um, and then the drinks are really overpriced, but at least you get in for free. Okay. So that was a nice money saving thing while we were right. <laughs> okay. So you can go to the pool party, just don't sit down yeah. <laughs> and don't buy a drink, but you can get in for free yeah, yeah. if you know a promoter. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it's like the promoter I went through was just online. So I didn't even have to, have to talk to anybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. You just get your name on the list yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Guest list and you're in. So yeah, there cool. are there people sitting on flamingos in the pool? Like is, is this <laughs> they what have I'm imagining? What they call like cabanas. So like depends which club you go to. Sometimes they're like couches in the pool. Otherwise they're just around the pool. And, and you pay. You have to pay like I didn't even want to ask how much it was, but I could see what they were getting and I'm like, this looks like it's a thousand dollars plus. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's it's wow. insane. It's insane. I was gonna say this is like a Bali beach club, but it doesn't no, sound no. Vegas. <laughs> you could go to a Bali no. beach club ten <laughs> ten thousand times over for that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You have to like it's good to like chat to people once you're in these places like Vegas because they'll give you like the tips. Mm. And like I learned a lot because I was like, are we allowed to sit down? I, there's too many free spots and too many people walking around like there's something up. And that's how I questioned it. And then I asked like when it's the security guards, not one of the people working at the clubs because then they'd tell you to sit down. Yeah. And then that's how they kind of get you. But like oh, the wow. security guard, he was like, "No, don't sit down." Like he didn't care. Okay. And was Coachella worth it after all that yeah. hype yes. and anticipation? You booked your tickets so many yeah. months in advance. Oh mate, I'd go like twenty thousand times over. It was probably the best festival I've been to, and I don't really enjoy festivals. But you've been to a couple. I've been to a few festivals here in Australia, and that one. It's definitely like one of the best in the world for a reason. <laughs> yeah, right. Have you been to festivals in Europe? Um, no, I haven't. No. Okay. No. Interesting. But you're a big, for those of you that don't know, Manix, the big gig. Yeah. I've been uh, to Eurovision. <laughs> Eurovision, okay. Yeah, but not a festival. Okay. But they do it better than most. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. Like, yeah, I mean, the biggest festival I've been to in Australia is Blues Fest, and they're really good, Blues Fest, but i got to say it was better than that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Worth it. Worth yeah. it. Tick that off your bucket yeah, list. Yeah, definitely worth the money, even with the exchange rate. Like, really worth it. Would do it again. Great. Yeah. Res- respect. Well done. Yeah. Good on you for spending the money. Kate, <laughs> what about you? What's uh, What's been happening in your world and what maybe money tips or what have you got for us this month? Well, I didn't quite get to Coachella, but I went to the <laughs> Melbourne Writers Festival over oh, the weekend wow. yes. and it was excellent. It was I went to seven different talks, a whole heap of different authors. I hadn't read their books before or heard much about them so I was just trying to expose myself to new ideas and it was just really interesting most of the tickets when I booked with early bird pricing were 20 to 30 dollars so this was great they're at the state library of victoria they're at the athenaeum theater 
just really central locations and you get to hear different people hear different ideas and get a lot of book recommendations, which for me is great. So for me, that was a really fairly low cost weekend where I got to hear heaps of new ideas. So that was my festival for the month. And that's probably as thrilling as it gets in my life. But in terms of money saving ideas, pumpkin soup is something that (laughs) has been happening in my life recently. And I calculated You can make the pumpkin soup for under $10, which gives you six servings. So excellent money-saving recipe. It's filling, it's warm, it's great for winter. Maybe have a piece of toasty bread with it. I use the recipe Tin Eats recipe, which my sister is sick of me going on about this website because I only ever cook from recipe Tin Eats recipes now. Recipe Tin Eats. Okay, we'll put a link in the show Naji is excellent, fantastic. You can follow her on Instagram. Great cookbook. I think it's one of the top sellers across the bookstores in Australia. But anyway, under $10 and I did the mass because I looked at Coles and calculated the price of the pumpkin, the onion, the cream, the garlic and the stock cubes and it comes out under $10 for six servings. So I'll link the recipe in the show notes because I think it's a great way to save your budget a little bit through winter because we're all struggling with grocery bills right now. Yeah, that's great. That's a great tip. Um Love it. Pumpkin soup. Uh, one of these days you'll grow your own pumpkins, Kate, on your uh, on your farm. I haven't quite got to pumpkins yet, but have grown some herbs at home, so that's good. Another one that I've been doing recently is having friends over for movie or footy nights where we can just make our own pizzas and things like that. Everyone brings something. So that usually has a night out feel, so you get to have fun. You get to catch up with everyone and it's usually under 10 or $20 per person. So you get the experience, you get catching up, you don't have many dishes and you keep the cost down. So you could do something, whether it's an activity or a movie or a game night, did that recently. Cool. That's a good way to avoid going out. And if you host, you don't have to worry about getting home yes. late in the evening. So that's my tip. Also, the grilled Burger place. Yes, burger bar. If you set up your account, you nominate your football team. If your football team wins the game that weekend and they don't ask you to prove, I don't, your loyalty to the football team. Uh, But anyway, I I was truthful, put down Richmond, so I haven't been succeeding much this year. But if your team wins over the weekend on the Monday following that win, you get two for one burgers at Grilled. So Monique and I have done that a couple of times. Definitely benefited from that. Mostly last year. Richmond haven't been great this year. Yeah. yeah. How's Carlton going? I have no idea. I've been away for too long. You're normally a pro tipper. <laughs> I know. Um, I've been out of the loop. Yeah. Anyone that's not on the east or west coast, uh, sorry, south or west coast, I'm sure Grilled has a similar offer in different states. Yeah. Well, that's a kind of little quirk, isn't it? You get yeah. two burgers for the price of one. I was speaking to some of the people in our wider co-working office and often a group of them have all signed up and they'll go together and then they'll just split the cost between them all. So That's pretty good. They'll yeah. take three vouchers and six people and then they only have to pay half price for burgers. And my other money-saving cool. tip is for Guzman and Gomez. So yeah. Monique and I were walking through the food court yesterday and I saw the sign that said free burrito if you download the app. So wondering if this was too good to be true, downloaded the app, signed up. It seemed like it was all legit. Got Monique to sign up. We ordered our free burritos, I think about $13.50 in value each. And we got our free burritos at lunch. It was all legit. It was so easy. We just did it on the app. Yeah. Didn't have to ask for the free burrito. It was just all done on the app. By the time we got there, it was ready. That's so good. (laughs) So there's over 200 Guzman and Gomez stores across Australia. So chances are there might be one near you or if you head into the city, free lunch. It's just like when you go to H&M or one of these places and at the checkout, they'll say, if you download the app or create an account now, you'll get 10 bucks off. Just do Mm. it right now. They're harvesting your data. Well, yeah, it's like in uh, when we build businesses and when we talk about this, uh, we call it a customer acquisition cost, right? So it's the cost of acquiring a a lead Mm. or a a potential customer. And now they can send you notifications. Now they can send you push notifications to be like, hey, Monique, you like that burrito? Mm. You know. Why don't you order it again? Check out this taco (laughs) over here. Um, Yeah. So um, that's a really good strategy and good on you for taking advantage of all that. It was great. 
Well, yeah. I had to check it was legit before we uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. shared it on Money and Chill, but it was, and we both successfully enjoyed our burritos for lunch. I have photo evidence to prove it, so there yes. you go. Okay, cool. What I a- didn't get one, by the way. I didn't notice that, so thank you. But I did bring chocolates back for the, the family. Um, never mind, guys. Well, you maybe can have your time. burrito next week. Yeah, maybe I'll yeah. just go by myself. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll, I didn't really have that much for money saving this month, seeing that I'm money spending. Um <laughs> <laughs> before we go away. Uh, I will maybe call out something I've mentioned before, which is uh, we are doing the trusted house sitters thing where cool. people are s- taking care of our pets in our house. You found some peeps? Found some peeps, yeah. The um, They volunteered. that They weren't coerced. Uh, and, yeah, they're going to take care of the house and say it's putting the dogs and That's rabbit really and uh, feathered things in, <laughs> uh, into care. You have quite the farm. Yeah, on. so uh, they... Like they come in, they sit at the house. These guys are from South America, so um, lovely, lovely couple. Uh, they've been doing a few house sits on their Australian trip. So they come, take care of your house, take care of your pets, and you can read reviews and they're all verified and stuff. And then they'll probably go somewhere else or go overseas and do the same thing. And uh, like if you live in a remote, if you work in a remote job or you can work online anytime, you should strongly consider making use of one of these websites, which is Trusted House Sitters. Um, and there's other websites. But you can go, say, for example, to London, New York. We were looking at places in the middle of nowhere in like Canada, like Labrador. Like <laughs> literally, not a dog, it's a place. Um, like literally in the middle of nowhere and going like house-sitting a horse um, at a farm or a ranch. So and are you house-sitting on your upcoming trip? No, we're not. But we've thought about this and we were like, we've got so many uh, virgin points. We could basically go anywhere. Uh, And we're like, well, how can we go somewhere but not spend money? Mm. Um, So we're like, well, we've got points. Secondly, we could do one of these trusted house sitting things because we'll get a review for our profile of house letting. um, And you can use that to go and house sit as well. So it works like all across the board. And um, yeah, people report saving on average 30 to 40% of their travel costs. That's so good. Yeah. So it's a really good thing if you're connecting. So what I mean by that is like, Let's say you're going to Europe and you're going for three weeks on a tour and you, for example, you know, like you're going to be pretty exhausted. You probably want to wash your clothes. You probably just want to rest and chill for a week. You'll be able to find a place for like five or seven days pretty easily. Um, Go through the process and then you'll be able to stay there, take care of the animals, make it feel like home and then take off again and do the second leg of your trip or something like that. It gets a bit tricky when you try and rely on it Mm. permanently. Mm. Even in Europe, I remember when I was planning to go on this longer trip that never actually happened, but there was a lot of websites where you could find programs where it wasn't necessarily house-sitting, but you could get accommodation in exchange for giving them two hours of admin support a day or social media support or Mm. helping with cleaning or some things. So often you could exchange services for accommodation, especially in lots of areas in Europe when they've got falling down castles they're trying to rebuild and things like that. Oh, wow. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but... There's, so people get really creative with travel, especially if you're not time constrained and you're not having to rush from location to location so you can afford to live somewhere a little bit further out for a while. Yeah. Uh, in other words, in other news, Kate was giving me uh, music advice uh, and in particular software device uh, recommendations off air because I was saying that I've got unused credits on Audible, which is pretty cool. I always thought that they expired, but good old Amazon, owner of Audible, um, they basically allow you to accrue six credits if you keep paying your bill. Mm. And uh, we spoke with, or I spoke with uh, Dave Gow, author of Strong Money. We gave the book away last year, a lot at our events. Uh, and he told me, I think the book is it's in total 20, over, over 20,000 copies. Yeah. Now. And 70, 70 or 50% of those it's have come through o- audio only. Wow. So that's huge. If you're going to write a book or something like that, um, you'd almost prioritize Spotify or, or Audible these days. Yeah, so if you have Spotify Premium, Kate, which you were telling me, you can get 15 hours for free. Yeah, you- and for a lot of people, that's all you need. So that's why I think if you're accumulating so many credits on Audible, you should probably just use them up, cancel that, and switch to Spotify Premium, and then you're getting your 15 hours free a month. Yes. Because okay. most books are included. Sometimes there's a little lock on it, but most things are there. So, But I'm in the 0.01% of people that use YouTube music. 
<laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but are you paying for Spotify Premium anyway? No, I'm not. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, no, oh, right. I'm definitely not. I'm um, I did pay for a family plan of YouTube Premium, which gives us YouTube Music for free for the oh. five people. So that's, that's thirty two okay. bucks a month. Yeah, so no ads on YouTube. You get some YouTube originals and you get YouTube Music, um, which is which is cool. And that that algorithm is so much more dialed into who I am than the Apple Music one, which is just like one minute it's like Mariah Carey, next minute it's like Corn, <laughs> and I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't keep up. I'm glad there's some software in this world that understands you, Owen. Yeah. <laughs> it's, until my mom gets on my YouTube account, it's just like throwing some uh, Dr. Phil or something in there. It just okay. really mixes it up. Um, the other thing is Lifeblood, Give Blood. Uh, is, uh, Lifeblood is a, a place where you can donate your blood in Australia, also plasma. Uh, I do it pretty regularly uh, here in Australia. Um, you, can, you don't get paid for it like you do in the US, but uh, you can donate blood, get a free cheese and crackers and and what have you a cup of tea uh, and it's you feel good doing it because you you're giving back and they make it really easy at lifeblood you can download the app and get started they'll tell you your blood type they'll measure things like blood pressure and generally it's more like a checkup as well so it's 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 really good to do uh, there'll be a lifeblood near you uh, and you can donate blood and save someone's life that's all from me this month mon anything else to add after your travel extravaganza not really. Okay. I'm still recovering. Still recovering. Okay. <laughs> Monique's yeah. going to be on pumpkin soup for a while. Yeah, yeah exactly. Pumpkin yeah. soup. Yeah. Get some health into you. That's, uh, that's, that's always good. Yep. Uh, behind the scenes at Rask, uh, Monique's back and mm-hmm. she's uh, walked back into the uh, the kitchen, as they say, and it's, it's fine. She's edited four podcasts in 24 hours. <laughs> yes. So yeah. she's going for Just it. Straight in. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, great stuff. Great to have you back. But we, uh, yeah, we've, uh, the team has grown since you've been I away. Know. Uh, we've also rolled out Rask Invest. It hasn't, well, it has launched, um, and we'll be, you'll be hearing more about that no matter which podcast you listen to, but Rask Invest has launched and, uh, we've got a lot of investors that are interested. We've got a lot of investors that have already invested. Um, and it's been really, really, really great to see and chat to people because one of the things that we've never really done at Rask is actually chat to people as they use our services. Normally it's like all online, but now people can call us or we can call them scheduling Google Meets and that sort of stuff and just generally just chit-chat about what they're doing, um, where they want to go in the future. We can kind of obviously give personal advice, but um, it's just really, really good to check in. So that's launched. That's been a big project. And we've done a whole heap of other stuff behind the scenes that is so boring, but was really, really impressive. And um, uh, I'm so proud of everyone for getting it done. But if you do, for example, like we moved our membership website, you guys probably don't know that much about that but we moved our membership website so that's going to receive a facelift soon um yeah it's going to be a you launched big the community the, we launched the community yeah soft launch the community which so is a non- free facebook community some listeners may be remembering yes we facebook community. we did have a facebook community with quite a few thousand people it's just so many bots and this is, it was so hard to stop scammers getting in pump and dumpers these types of it's people. very hard to sort of navigate it and make it a safe place for people to learn about finances so this community is much better and safer more easy to manage yeah well it actually came about because well two reasons one our community and the membership website needed to be expanded and people were telling us hey we want more feedback and whatever so we responded to that in about two or three weeks but the other thing was i basically quit twitter and twitter was my chosen so social media platform because uh, I loved it. In the early days, there were so many great finance people and their investors and you could talk to them. And I mean, it's how we met. Yeah, it is the how podcast. we met. It is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's how this came to be. Um, but it's that, changed. That's it's the not origin what it was. Story. Yeah. And it's sad because, you know, over the last little while, in my opinion, just my opinion only, I've started, you would start to receive so much more crap in your feed. Things that you don't follow, for example, is just being pushed in there for political reasons or for whatever reason. Um, just really just stuff that's not interesting. And I thought to myself, like, why, why am I here? And then you're like, okay, well, maybe you can go to Instagram, but it's more like image and video and pretty one-dimensional. It's not really community in my opinion. And then you think, well, maybe you can go to Facebook, but not as many people are using Facebook in the younger demographics. You don't attract everyone. TikTok maybe, but again, it's like kind of one-dimensional. It's a lot of outbound, not much inbound. Uh, and then Reddit is probably the last one, um, and that's a it's a good platform. But I thought, well, why don't we just create a space where people can create their own profile, 
no one is pushing anything into their feed unless they click on the thing that says like the latest posts or whatever, just like a, a Facebook feed. And it's finance, it's business, it's property, it's life. There's no politics. There's no crap in there. There's no trolls. They will instantly just be booted out. <laughs> um, there's none of that because we just wanted to create a safe space where people can communicate. And it's been really, really, really engaging. And a lot of our hosts from the podcast are in there. Yeah. Um, James was in there. James, advisors. Yeah, James was in there, financial advice. He answered so many questions in the quickest succession. I wonder if he was actually doing anything or if he was just sitting there waiting for people to comment, which is cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to we're gonna promote the community as a way to receive questions. So we'll be taking questions from the community. One thing that's really cool in there is we can also host live events inside the community so people can get notified, but also you can go to physical events that are promoted through the community. So you can say, yes, I'll attend, get tickets, that sort of a thing. Um, there's also ability for us to roll out courses within the community, free courses. And this is all free, by the way, guys, all free. The only roadblock is that you have to log in with your RASC email, like your, your RASC account, and that is just to stop people signing up um, and just having that really shitty experience where there's trolls and bots and that sort of stuff. They just can't get in because uh, they have to go through RAS to get in and they just can't do that. So Great. it's well, really cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a link to that in the show notes as well so yeah. you can get involved. I think Mitch is going to be doing a giveaway. Uh, Mitchell, our uh, head of funds management, he's going to be doing a giveaway for certain posts and um, people that get involved in the community in the next month. So Things like flight center vouchers, um, free courses, these types of things are all going to be uh, up for grabs if people get in and, and share and like posts and do cool. certain things. So uh, we'd love to have more people in there. It's totally free. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Finally, uh, we've got to share some interesting finds or resources beyond our own. Um, maybe... Monique, anything interesting? <laughs> I really did not prepare for this that much. <laughs> what did you do on the all the plane all the way to the US and all the way what back? Did I do? Well, I mostly slept. I'm a really good uh, sleeper oh, you on the plane. sleep on yeah, the plane. It's my number one thing to do on the plane. Um, Very well done. Other than that, I take advantage of the in-flight entertainment. <laughs> no finance podcasts on the plane? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Um I don't even remember what I watched. This is not, I can't remember. I watched Barbie again. There oh, we go. nice, <laughs> nice. I am rated Barbie. It's now available to stream on, uh, I think it's Netflix, but I could be wrong. I think it's Netflix. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. now stream Barbie, Margot Robbie, <laughs> Ryan Gosling. What more could you want on your Friday night, Kate? What about you? Interesting finds and resources. Well, I have been really enjoying the Money with Katie podcast. She is in the US. She's part of the mm. Morning at Brew podcast family. Uh, also a good follow on Instagram. She does really interesting deep dives into all sorts of topics. Maybe it's poverty in America or is ESG investing a lie? Like she just will do the research. She'll interview really interesting journalists and researchers and academics and pull these pieces together. So she has an excellent newsletter as well. So she'll spend a whole week deep diving into different topics. So cool. I would recommend her newsletter, her Instagram and her podcast. You can be selective, pick topics that are broader and not about 401ks so you get a more yeah. balanced feel and you don't have to listen to US-centric financial information. But I cool. think she's very balanced. She brings up lots of different views and points. So I found it really interesting and thought-provoking. Do you think we will see a Money with Kate podcast here mm. in Australia? This is Money with Kate, isn't it? <laughs> what are you talking about? Money with this Kate, Owen and Monique. <laughs> well, you okay. want me to create another podcast? That sounds like a lot of work, Owen. So Money with Katie, good podcast and good yeah. Instagram. Yeah, cool. really recommend Like it. Thank you. What and else? Do, well, you've already mentioned the Spotify premium, but I was just going to mm -hmm. say I have been – really enjoying using that. I've been getting into memoirs this year and I'm very late to the party, but I read Educated by Tara Westover. Very interesting journey. Many people have read it before me in the world, but it's about her journey getting an education growing up without one. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I did finally finish The Alchemist and I've started a new public thread on the community, and this is not something that was pre-planned, um, but I started reading meditations, the Marcus Aurelius kind of notes mm -hmm. on basically how to live your life. And I, it came super highly recommended. And I don't know if it's one of those books where people are like, 
you should read meditations by like the Marcus Aurelius thing. And I'm like, is that, are you just recommending that because it sounds smart? Or like, are you like- I think Anna's- Ryan Holiday popularized all of these books on stoicism and yeah. it became very popular on Twitter. Like yeah. Every guy to have read- It did. It's like, Marcus it's Aurelius. one of those things. And SLT, <laughs> shout out to SLT in our community. I asked for feedback. Can anyone, you know, suggest other books or similar books? And SLT said, this book, lives in our house and has been read by my husband. He recommends skipping skipping chapter one, a long gratitude and thanks essay to lots of dead Romans. The rest is good, but not an easy read. Um, and I would agree with that. It's a, it's a really good book and it does get better after chapter one, but it's like a lot of ideas and there's really big ideas summarized in like two sentences. So you kind of miss them. But the other one obviously is Poor Charlie's Almanac, which I mentioned in last month's uh, Money and Chill. And it was just an amazing book. I actually did a book review, a very brief book review that's available. Uh, and it kind of pulls out some of the nuggets in there, uh, which no doubt I'll bring up on the podcast in future uh, weeks and months. Uh, this is not so much what an interesting find or whatever, um, but we've been doing some webinars lately with like experts and whatever on particular topics around ETFs. And it was a bit proven to be super popular between five and 10,000 people watch them either live or on replay. Um, we are bringing back the Rask Live show in July. So if you are interested in our you know, hour to an hour and a half format of live Q&A where we tackle topics, we get authors on, we get speakers on, we get investors on, uh, check out the Rask YouTube channel because that is coming back in July and it'll be coming back in a very, very big way. Finally, two other books which I might recommend for business owners. If you listen to the Australian Business Podcast, I recommend these all the time, but I have read them recently. Uh, Traction by Gino Wickman um, and Scaling Up by Vern Harnish, I think is his name. Um, Both books are wonderful. Traction is for small business owners and solopreneurs, anyone like that, that wants to build a proper business. Uh, It tackles everything from like HR to systems and whatever. And then Scaling Up is more like a textbook, but it uses case studies. Um, it's really, really, really cool. So both books highly recommended in my must read books. If I had three business books for every business owner to read, uh, it'd be Traction, Scaling Up, and the third one would be The E-Myth Revisited um, by Ross Gerber. So um, those three books I can highly recommend. I've also been listening to a heap of podcasts, um, just in very bizarre and diverse topics, which are probably not of interest to many other people. <laughs> Yeah. Love it. I'm so, sure you'll have plenty more recommendations after your overseas adventure because mm. lots of plane time. Yes, lots of plane time. I'm not like Monique. How I? many times are you going to watch Barbie? Well, I will watch it at least once <laughs> and I'll send you a photo from the plane. How cool is it that planes have Wi-Fi? I just think that's oh, so good. That just blows my mind. Planes like, used to be a great time to just switch off. But I and but, not answer okay, your emails. So let me let me say this again. I'm not saying about like <laughs> from the gonna work be emailing or like, us from, hey, I can dial into WhatsApp and you know check out everything from no, a technology saying, point of view. Yeah, I don't just want to like hear someone on there. We're up in the sky, FaceTime yeah. at two a.m. on the we plane. We are up above the clouds. <laughs> How? Yeah. How is this <laughs> happening? <laughs> Speaking with people, I was chatting to a guy the other day. He was flying to Australia. I interviewed him on the Investors Podcast. He was chat. He was flying from Chicago to Australia, and in the time of his plane trip, this is how long it is. He managed to live stream two of his son's hockey games. So like one day and then the next day, he was at like a competition. That's so he could great. live stream and then message him after the game and say, hey, great job on this, this and this. Cute. Um, but like what a world we live in. Yeah. It's Unreal. pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, I won't be doing that, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of cool. I just got to, every time I think, geez, we're up here in the air. That's crazy. Yeah. So, well, ladies, this has been heaps of fun. If you do want to send in your money-saving tips, hacks, tricks, send them in. There's a link in your show notes. Get in touch with us on social media. Uh, we love hearing from you no matter where you are. Um, we do actually need some tips as well. So, please send them in to us. We do get a lot coming our way when we do call out. So, we will shout you out on the show next month. Money and chill. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Monique, thanks for joining us. Anytime. And Kate Campbell, the money Kate Campbell. Money with Kate. Monique and Owen. Uh, (laughs) Money with Kate, thank you for joining us. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching this video on the RAS Network. While you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get videos each and every day on business, finance, investing, and so much more.